Anyone who witnessed Giganti's ravings would have found it hard to believe that he controlled the largest and most profitable family in the New York Mafia, an organization with a long and bloody history. His parents came from Naples and settled in Lower Manhattan. Vincent finished eighth grade and started trade school, but soon dropped out. Less than a decade later, Giganti became a wise guy in the Genovese crime family. Vincent Giganti's crime career spanned a turbulent time in American Mafia history. The mob had expanded its reach into legitimate businesses, the various families fighting to control them. And in the ensuing turf wars, violence was often the final arbiter. The family that Giganti attached himself to was steeped in Cosa Nostra's American origins. The infamous Charles Lucky Luciano, responsible for organizing and structuring the American Mafia, was the family's first boss until he was imprisoned in 1936. As a result, Luciano's family administration, Frank Costello, nicknamed the Prime Minister of the Underworld, and Vito Genovese fought for control of the family. Costello won out, but Vito Genovese began plotting his takeover. A young Vincent Giganti first gained notoriety as a mobster in 1957 when he attempted to murder Frank Costello. Within the Mafia, it was widely believed that Vito Genovese had ordered the hit to get rid of his rival. Giganti's bullet only grazed Costello's head, but apparently Costello got the message. Soon after the shooting, he put out word that he was retiring. Vito Genovese was now the boss of the family that would take his name. Giganti was arrested for attempted murder and brought to trial, but the case was dismissed for lack of a witness. The location and angle of Costello's wound indicated he probably saw the would-be assassin, but at the trial, he failed to identify Giganti as the shooter. Even for an ousted boss, the oath of secrecy remained sacred. Giganti continued to make money for the Genovese family through illegal enterprises. Two years after the failed assassination attempt, he was arrested and convicted of narcotics violations. He received a seven-year sentence. Convicted mobsters are expected to do their time and remain silent. If Giganti served his time and kept his mouth shut, he would be rewarded after his release. It was up to Giganti to figure out how to avoid future arrests. He was a model prisoner, neat, polite, and willing to take on any job. Giganti's cooperation was so impressive that some prison officials wrote glowing reports. He was released early from the federal penitentiary in Lewisburg for good behavior when he was 35 years old. Giganti now devised a secret plan that he hoped would prevent his return to prison forever. He didn't want to leave his mafia life or give up his shot at becoming the boss of the family. After his release in 1964, Giganti's public behavior began to grow bizarre. He became a frequent sight on the streets of Greenwich Village. Giganti could be found wandering the neighborhood, appearing disoriented and mentally unstable. Not long after he left prison, Giganti learned of a police investigation over his association with known mobsters. In 1969, he was indicted for attempting to bribe New Jersey police officers. Allegedly, he offered them money in exchange for information about surveillance and ongoing investigations in the Genovese family. Now at almost 40 years old, he returned to his mental disability as a foil and checked himself into a psychiatric hospital for the first time. To support his story, Giganti and his relatives began to revise his medical history. While Giganti was at Lewisburg, his mother had been required to fill out a detailed family history. She said Vincent was a healthy, happy child. She noted only a speech impediment and a slight heart murmur. He had been a boxer, but never had a serious injury. By the time of the 1969 indictment, however, 
Giganti's lawyers claimed he was not competent to stand trial. His family suddenly remembered a host of mental problems. He'd been given to severe temper tantrums. He had a phobia for the dark. He had been truant from school. He was at one time obese and had learning problems. The incompetency argument worked. Giganti never stood trial for the 1969 bribery charges.